Hey everybody, Jabman025 here. Today I'm taking a look at my 127th Master Grade, the Camper, which I've already built and reviewed. This is obviously a custom version of this kit. I'm going to be talking about how I made the custom, what I did, how I did it, and so on and so forth. I'm not talking about the actual kit itself very much. If you want to see my review of the Camper, I'm going to leave a link in the description below. That way, if you haven't seen that review, you can have a look at it through this. So, let's have a look. Obviously, I'm doing the Shars camper, so we have to change a bunch of colors here. The original camper comes in a teal blue. I'm changing it to the Shar color, so that means pink, not red. It's pink. The secondary colors are red and black. So, most of it's going to be redone in a primer, a white primer you see down there in the corner, and then I'm going to repaint that, which I'll talk about in a bit. The black is a very high gloss black, and I really added a lot of gloss to this kit in terms of top coats. Now, through the colors I've used. Obviously the black, plain old gloss black, nothing fancy. Repainted the bottom engines with the silver and the red so everything else matches. That's what that painter's tape was for. Silver, a little bit, is pretty much good old-fashioned chrome silver, nothing fancy. The red is a new red I've not used before, is a deep metallic red. It's, as it implies, it's a deep color. A little bit of the armor, a lot on the thrusters. The gray, which I've used for some of the inner frame, is a graphite metallic gray. Again, a different color I've not used before. wanted a different gray than I've used, but I still wanted a shiny, glossy, you know, metallic looking color. Now the white, I hand painted over with this. To get the exact right, sharp pink is nearly impossible. However, Mr. Color has a Gundam color, literally called Sharp Pink, so you don't gotta worry about it. Just use this, and you get the exact right color of pink. And here you go. Like I said, prime the whole thing white, and then paint over that. Changing that uh, dark blue into a pink would have been an unholy nightmare, so you have to prime that with a white. And paint over it, detail it up. This was a long process. But, I think it turned out pretty good when it's all said and done. Kept the arms off just so we can have a better look at the details. You can see, there's where that pure metallic red comes in, down on some of the armor, around the cables, a little bit on the backpack, a little bit on the fin at the top. Basically, I painted the whole thing with that metallic red, and then I covered up most of it with the sharp pink. But, you see, i got a little lining to do, and that's going to be tricky on this, but not impossible. I'll show you in a little bit. Thrusters, like I said, there's lots of thrusters and stuff on this kit because this kit is engines and guns, and that's about it. So it can move and fly, which is why I always thought it was a good choice for Char. Um, three times faster, this is plenty fast. Add on the arms, and we've panel lined it. I use just a standard. A uh, real touch marker to go in and panel line and fill in some holes and fill in some dots, and it worked very well. Problem is, if you overdid it, which I did in a couple places, there's not much you can do to erase that. It's just kind of stuck on there now. So I had to cover it up with the pink paint and try again. Luckily, that didn't happen in a lot of places. It did happen though. But yeah, looks good. The spikes on the shoulder I changed from chrome to silver to black just because I thought it looked better after I put the whole thing together. Decals. Old Samuel decal helped me out here. I told him I was interested in some uh, generic Char decals because I wanted to do a Char camphor. Either he already had some, someone else had asked this before, or he threw some together for me. Either way, thanks a lot. This is kind of a combination of some Char decals from uh, the Zaku 2 and the camphor decal, so it's kind of mishmashed together so I get a little bit of everything, which is cool. I appreciate that. Uh, like I said, I don't know if he did it just for me or he'd already had that on file. Either way, cool. Add that on there. The only drawback is there's a lot of big decals that he gave me, and you need big flat surfaces for that. And there's not many flat surfaces on this thing, so it gets a little finicky at places. See one here back on the shoulder? It's kind of wrinkly and a little not quite smooth. Like I said, you need a flat surface for those big ones, and I don't have it. Put a little 025 on the back heel. This is kind of a wink, wink, nod, nod to me. Uh, I'm signing my work. What can I say? No one will ever see it down there, but what are you going to do? But 
you know, decals on the front leg, on the chest. They get, like I said, standard camphor decals. Didn't use the white one on the spike just because I like the black spike as they were. Accessories. I have a general rule on my customs. I plan out and meticulously detail everything on the kit well beforehand, and the guns I just kind of wing. Painted the bazookas matte black, changed the scope to a silver, the missiles, grenade things, matte black uh, handle with a metallic candy coat red on the actual bomb part. The beam sabers, I went with a kind of a metallic red. Um, I knew when I went in there, you take these apart and you put them in that little slot. It is so tight beforehand, you can't get them back out. When I paint them, yeah, I put them in there, they're never coming out. So, I had to make a decision. Do I want them in there or do I want to leave them out? I put them in there, they're never coming out. They're there forever. And two shotguns. They give you an extra piece for the shotgun. I kept it pretty simple, just a matte black, but I painted the pump and the handle in a matte brown, so it kind of looks more like a actual shotgun. If it looks odd because he's not holding the trigger, that's intentional, or that's in intended, rather. There isn't actually no triggers on those guns, but whatever. Looks cool. Final thoughts on this kit. I'm giving myself a thumbs up. <laughs> what can I say? I like the way this turned out. It was a long build, or a long paint, rather. The build on this kit is actually pretty easy, but there's a lot. I repainted the whole thing. I took a dark kit and lightened it up considerably, and that's, you know, a pain, but I think it looks good. My idea behind this kit was, what if Char got a camphor at the end of the series, as opposed to the Zeong, or as opposed to the Rickdom in the novel? I always thought camphor was the suit for Char. Heavily armed, really fast, really maneuverable, not much armor, <laughs> but what you gonna do? That's Char. He's a fighter, and he's a fast fighter. So, I like it. Thumbs up. What do you guys think? Well, gang, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this review. I hope you found it informative. If you have any questions, please ask them. I will answer them as best as I can. Please stay tuned for more. I always got more reviews coming. And I will see you guys next time. Oh, and uh, one more thing. You'll notice I didn't actually use the whip mine, so I've got a whole bunch of leftover mines. And I'm not sure what to do with them. Wait a minute. Idea. Mm. Oh, wait. <laughs> yep. Yep. King me. Nice.